All right, everybody, there's good movies, there's bad movies, and then there's movies that make you go, what the hell were they thinking? Here we go. All right, today we're looking back at 1977's The Sentinel, a forgotten gem from long ago. But before we go any further, as always, we're going to do the routine. Do the trailer. It's one of the nicer tree line blocks in New York, and only 20 minutes from the center of town. Oh, and just around the corner, there's a supermarket and the cleaners. That's Father Harron in 5A. He's blind. Blind? Well, then what does he look at? There is danger everywhere. There is evil. Evil everywhere. Turn around, Allison. Look behind you. There is horror. There is darkness. I think Allison may die. But watching, waiting, warding off evil, there is hope. The Sentinel. Before Howard, there was Father David Spinetti. Before him, Mary Thorin becomes Sister Mary Angelica. Father Matthew Halloran dies the same day that Allison Parker disappears and becomes Sister Teresa. I call thee! I horror and confusion expedite our glory! Is the Sentinel the only thing that stands between the mortal world and the torment of hell? between happiness and horror. She went to a party with eight dead murderers. Eli Wallach. Doesn't everybody? Have a hat to a noisemaker. Sylvia Miles. Nobody has lived in that building for three years. Ava Gardner, Martin Balsam, Jose Ferrer, Arthur Kennedy. There is danger. I swear to God, I'll kill you! Chris Sarandon. I'll kill you! <laughs> Burgess Meredith. Welcome home. And Christina Raines. The Sentinel. The most frightening motion picture experience of your life. And the most revealing. Turn around. Look behind you. Be one with us. No! There is evil everywhere. And the Sentinel is the only hope. The Sentinel. Okay, this motion picture was directed by Michael Winner. Now, Michael Winner had a really, really cool career. I mean, come on, he directed Death Wish. He directed Death Wish too. He also did movies like The Big Sleep, The Mechanic, Shadow's Land, The Wicked Lady, Death Wish 3, and The Nightcomers. So, his forte was kind of like genre-y, action-y, low-budget-y, but not low-budget-y type flicks. And he did a good job at it. So... Now we're off to the cast. Okay, the fun thing about this cast of this motion picture is there is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of recognizable names. Now, I'm going to stick to the main players in this motion picture and give an honorable mention at the end without going too deep because there's so many names and there's so many people I don't want to be here all day. But everybody will get mentioned more or less and you'll see what I mean as we go along. Okay, playing Michael is Chris Sarandon. Come on, man, Chris Sarandon's been around for a long, long time, had a long, long career. You will remember him from the cult favorite Fright Night. You're gonna remember him from The Princess Bride, Child's Play, The Osterman Weekend, Bordello of Blood, and The Classic and Timeless, and where he gave a great performance, Dog Day Afternoon. So, Chris Sarandon always does a great job, did a great job here, let's keep going. Okay, played Allison was Christina Raines. Almost sounds like a porn name, doesn't it? Whatever. Anyway, Christina Raines. Now, Christina Raines had a kind of a mm, career. It was what it was. Came went. It was mostly on TV. I mean, she was in movies like The Duelists and stuff, but really, her fame was done on TV, whatever fame she had. She was on stuff like Kojak. She was on stuff like Simon and Simon, T.J. Hooker, Matt Houston, The Love Boat, Murder, She Wrote, the fall guy. She also started as a model, really, and then wound up in acting, and then left acting at the age of 40 to become a nurse. So if you haven't seen her in a long time, 
That's why. Okay, plain... Charles, the rather odd neighbor, is Burgess Meredith. Come on, man, we've already been through Burgess Meredith before, but we're going to go through Burgess Meredith again. Burgess Meredith, legendary actor. Come on, let's be realistic, man. Rocky 1, Rocky 2, Rocky 3. He even popped up, I think, for a little guest scene in Rocky 5. You're talking grumpy old men. You're talking grumpier old men. You're talking one of my all-time favorite classics, Burnt Offerings. Burgess Meredith been around a long, long, long time. Passed away years ago, obviously, because, I mean, think about Burgess Meredith. When you think about Burgess Meredith, you think about old Burgess Meredith. I mean, you don't picture him when he was, like, 30. So, Burgess Meredith, you gotta love him. Always love him. Always does a great job. Did a great job in this. Let's keep going. Okay, playing Detective Gantz was Eli Wallach. Now, come on, man. Eli Wallach. Legendary career. A lot of westerns. He was in stuff like uh, How the West Was Won, The Magnificent Seven, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, The Deep. He was in so oh, another classic movie I'm going to review at some point called Circle of Iron with uh, David Carradine and shit where they, you know, they're trying to find the book. And he was the man in the oil. Eli Wallach, long, long career, been around forever, ever, 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 ever. God bless him. God love him. Let's keep moving. Okay, playing Gerd with Sylvia Miles. Yeah, Sylvia Miles has been around for a long, long time. Actually, I reviewed her way back when, when I did the review for The Fun House, which was one of the first episodes I did for this channel. I think it was like one of the first four or five, if memory serves, easily. But Sylvia Miles, again, been around a long time. The Fun House, she was in Wall Street, Evil Under the Sun, uh, 92 in the Shade, Midnight Cowboy. So, Sylvia Miles, long career, is what it is. Let's keep going. Okay, playing Miss Logan was Ava Gardner. I mean, fucking come on, really? It's Ava Gardner, man. You're going back to the old days of Hollywood, to the royal days of Hollywood. She was in some great stuff. She was in stuff like Whistle Stop, The Bride, Mogambo, The Barefoot Contessa, Seven Days in May. I mean, she's legendary. She is who she is. We all know who she is. We should know who she is. So Ava Gardner's Miss Logan does a good job in this, very elegant, but very creepy, does her part. Okay, and playing Sanji, we got Beverly D'Angelo. Come on, man, we all remember Beverly D'Angelo. If you watch the Christmas Vacation or European Vacation or any National Lampoon Vacation, you know Beverly D'Angelo. But she was in also stuff. She was in Hair, which was the really cool musical that they'd been set in. She was in Every Which Way But Loose with Clint Eastwood, Coal Miner's Daughter, Honky Tonk Freeway, she was, in, she was in Paternity, she was in a bunch of great movies, and she was in this, so how can you not love it? Okay, now's the part of the movie where I tell you about how like, there's like 15,000 other actors in this thing of big, big name and big, big importance, but, you know, because they didn't really play that big a part in the motion picture, I'm not going to pontificate about them all day. I mean, they were in the motion picture it is what it is. I mean, you got playing the photographer. You got Jeff Goldblum, a very young Jeff Goldblum. He only has a few lines, but he's in there. You also have Christopher Walken playing a detective in this. I don't remember if he actually speaks in the entire movie. He just stands there across from Eli Wallach, like, doing a bunch of that kind of stuff. But he's in there. Uh, Jeff Orbach, who was in, like, uh, tons of movies, and uh, I think he was even Dirty Dancing and stuff. He's in the motion picture playing a, a, a TV director, a commercial director, whatever the hell you want to call it. You also, who else am I missing? Oh, playing the professor, you got Martin Balsam. That's another one. I mean, he's been in a trillion, gazillion movies, for Christ's sake. So, but his role was so short and so small in this, I didn't really want to get into it that much. So, he's in there, too. And finally, playing Father Halloran was, was John Carradine. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, he's been in, like... Eight trillion movies. I'm not even gonna get into them all. Whether it was The Howling or, or great stuff from back of the, it doesn't matter. John Carradine has been in like a trillion things, from the biggest budget movies like from Ten Commandments to the lowest budget schlock shit. He's been in everything. So John Carradine, yeah. look at this cast. Okay, now this is one of those motion pictures. I truly don't want to give too much of it up because you gotta kind of discover the plot as you go along. It's really, really cool. It's kind of in-depth, kind of. But I'm going to give you a quick overview at the beginning of the story and then kind of let it fade out because I want you to find it. Okay, this motion picture is about Michael and Allison. And they're a couple. She's a model slash TV commercial actress and he's a lawyer. And Michael and Allison are looking for a place for Allison to live. He wants to get married and all this other kind of stuff, but she wants a place of her own and she wants to go out and look for an apartment. In the midst of all this, her dad dies, so she goes to the funeral and you find out that 
She tried to commit suicide at one point in her life by slitting her wrist because she found her dad having a three-way with these two weird-looking chicks. Is what it is. I don't know what to say. Anyway, back on track. She goes out. She's looking for apartments. That's where she runs into Ava Gardner, Mrs. Logan. Mrs. Logan shows her around and says, hey, I can give you this apartment right here for, bam, 500 a month. And she's like, I don't know. I can afford 500 a month. This is the 70s, people. It was different back then. So then she goes, oh, I can give it to you for 400 a month. She's like, really? Yes, really. So she moves in. And when she moves in, she gets to meet her neighbors. And oh, what a wonderful little fucking pack they are. You got Burgess Meredith and Sylvia Miles and Beverly D'Angelo. And they're weird and they're crazy and they're odd. And they start acting in weird and crazy and odd ways. I mean, really weird, really crazy and really odd. Before you know it, Allison's having weird dreams at night. She can't figure out what's going on. And her dreams are weird and odd. And strange. She complains to Mrs. Logan. She said, Mrs. Logan, they're, they're keeping me up. They're making noise upstairs all night. I can't sleep. All my neighbors are driving me crazy. Mrs. Logan says, there are no neighbors in there except for you and the blind priest who lives up on the top floor who just stares out the window all day doing nothing. And she's like, I've been to parties. I've been there. They're hanging out with me. I have neighbors. Mrs. Logan takes her to the place. You see, there are no neighbors. There is nobody there but her and the blind priest. And from there, the movie takes off. Why is she there? How is she there? Who are these neighbors? Are these neighbors really there? Is it in her head? Are they ghosts? Hmm, we'll find out. Why is it so important to the story, to Mrs. Logan and others, that she's there? Is she there for a reason? Is she there to take the place of somebody? Is she there to do a specific job? Why is the priest there? Hmm, I don't know. Is he just hanging out? Is he blind? Is he guarding the gates of hell? Either way, that's all stuff that you have to find out and experience in this motion picture, because I don't want to give the whole story away. It would just ruin it for you. And I probably already give it too much, so damn it. Okay, everybody, I'm going to tell you why I like this motion picture. Now, this motion picture, primarily to me, is just weird. It's a good motion picture. It's shot well. You kind of feel like you're halfway between Burnt Offerings and a Changeling. You know what I mean? It has that kind of vibe. It has that kind of feel. But with this really demented, almost Rocky Horror type of shit thrown into it that isn't cute or isn't funny, isn't danceable. It's got a weird sensibility. There's, there's a lot going on. There's parts of this motion picture where you're like, this is like a straight thing. And then there's parts of it where you're like, this is so queasy and weird feeling. I almost feel dirty watching it. I mean, any scenes in this motion picture that have the neighbors in it is going to sit there and throw you like, what the hell is taking place? Why isn't this girl out of here in two seconds? Because obviously there's something seriously wrong here. I mean, you got these neighbors that are just bizarre. Burgess Meredith plays bizarre so perfectly. He played it like he did when he was doing bizarre in a much smaller role in Burnt Offerings. This kind of feels like a takeoff of Burnt Offerings. Same character, really. He's kind of playing the same guy. He's and I even made that far apart, for Christ's sake. And you got the other character. You got Sylvia Miles, who's like this really eerie chick that would just drive anybody out of any place. You got Beverly D'Angelo, who just sits there right in front of Allison and just rubs one out in the middle of her house. I mean, you're like, what? Wouldn't that send somebody out the door saying, Jesus Christ, this chick just played herself in front of me? I got to go? Apparently not. But that's what I mean about all the scenes with the neighbors are just so bizarre and weird and creepy and odd and then the movie kind of falls back into like a normal melee again things like that you know you're watching it and it gets spooky and all the other kind of things and then it gets weird again they do these scenes in the motion picture where they're bringing in people kind of like from that movie freaks where there's actual people with physical deformities and limbs missing and like you know elephant man syndrome or whatever and they just threw them right into the motion picture when you're like did they really just do that did they really bring these people in here with these physical disabilities and handicaps and all that and just throw them in there as, as demonic souls and shit? What the, what the fuck are they doing? That's the kind of motion picture this is. It's good. It's enjoyable. It's well written. It's very well acted. The cast is just phenomenal in this. Everybody in this, whether it's Sylvia Miles, whether it's Chris Sarandon, whether it's Burgess Meredith, whether it's Eli Wallach, everybody's just spot on in this motion picture. But the weird factor, the queasiness factor of this motion picture, which just comes in out of nowhere and, and hits you and you're like, oh, this movie's going a certain, Ooh. okay, the movie's going back to, ah, Ooh. oh, the movie's okay, Ooh. and then it's over. So it's one of those motion pictures that takes you on a roller coaster of traditional classic little hard haunt, and then it goes into the weird realm of like 
like movies like Audition, that Japanese flick from several years ago, and stuff like that. You're just like, what the hell am I watching? And then it's, and then what the hell am I watching? So, good movie, weird movie, definitely worth a check out. You got to see it at least one point in your life. You might love it. You might watch it numerous times. How you got Beverly D'Angelo and Sylvia Miles running around naked all over the place? How can you not love that? Anyway, go check out The Sentinel. The Sentinel should actually give you a hint about what the hell's going on in this movie and why she's there and who the priest is. Whatever. Anyway, check it out. It's worth a watch. It's worth a look. It's definitely part of the 70s lexicon that you should take in, digest, absorb, enjoy. All right, everybody. Peace out. God bless you all. Have a good one. Take care of each other. Don't take no shit from nobody. Bye.